everybody. It's Chris Schubert with CNSG back for another edition of The Zoom, where we zoom in on thought leaders in the channel today. And when it comes to thought leadership and just genuine channel leadership, you don't get much bigger than Carrie Tangler from Comcast. Welcome, Carrie. Chris, thanks and good morning. It's great to be with you. Well, we're going to have a lot of fun in the next 20 minutes, I guarantee it. So, so Carrie, you have literally been with Comcast since the beginning of their channel journey. And uh, love for the folks that may have not met you before, had not had a chance to interface with you. Tell us a little bit about your story with Comcast and really what fires you up about coming into work each day. Well, it's been a great ride, um, Chris. Uh, as you know, I joined in, in 2011, just a couple months after we launched the program. And and, uh, you know, at the time it was, you know, we, we had absolutely no idea how big this thing was going to get. I mean, obviously, uh, um, myself and Craig Schlagbaum, Scott Mull, and the rest of the team that we had on board then all had some, some really relevant channel experience with level three, but cable was kind of a new, uh, a new breed of cat, so to speak. And, uh, we have have been um, absolutely astonished and overwhelmed with, you know, with the success we've had. And, and that's in large part due to the partner community. I mean, there was so much pent up demand when we launched this program in 2011 that uh, we were, we were just astonished. I mean, we actually had gone out to the, the original master agents that we were working with and asked them for, uh, um, you know, to, to give us a forecast of what they thought they could do. And we said, we can't take more than a hundred orders this month. Well, I mean, I think we're probably somewhere around 30 or 40 times that right now. So it's been a great ride, but uh, yeah, I joined in 2011 and, and had a history of, of channel and business development in, uh, in the IT and telecom space. I already mentioned level three. Um, I also did some work with Apple computer back in the day. So uh, I've been, been doing the same type of work for about 30 years now though so it's it's been a great ride wow uh, i mean and especially you know the folks i get to interview you know some folks are are lucky to have a tenure of six months and you know to be with uh, a company like comcast for as long as you have in the executive position that you have we we salute you um you know and you talk about cable i mean i remember when I was working for a smaller CLEC back in the days, you know, slinging my T1s back in 2010, 2011 <laughs> with those first fiber circuits, we were all going, who's in them? What? Who came into the channel? Uh-oh. And uh, it's, it's you, de- you guys were definitely disruptive with cable. I mean, cable changed the entire game for the channel. But as much as we love cable, as much as we love our cable TV, as much as we love NBC, <laughs> uh, let's let's talk a little bit about Comcast today in the channel and really where you are putting your focus. And the big thing I see now is that focus is on fiber. Tell me a yeah. little bit about Comcast's uh, fiber strategy today and why that is so crucial to your long-term strategy. Sure. Um, as, as you know, Chris, when we first came into the uh, into the channel, the only thing we were offering was our coax. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's actually a technically called the hybrid fiber coax, but, uh, um, you know, for all intents and purposes, we had an SMB offering that was based around a, uh, you know, a coax plant. A um, couple years into the channel, we started offering what we refer to as Metro Ethernet, and it was truly a Metro product. I mean, if you were in Detroit, we couldn't initially connect you to uh, a location in Chicago. Ultimately, we kind of built that out and, and developed a wide area network capability um, within a couple of years. And now, of course, it's it's a truly national network with with connectivity, uh, you know, internationally through NNIs with various providers. But you're right; we've been putting a lot more focus on that part of the business. Um, I mean, candidly, our footprint and our market share in the SMB space on the coax side is up in the 40 to 50% range in most of the areas that we're, uh, you know, where we've got network. So the real growth area for us is on the fiber side. Um, you know, our market share there is probably approaching double digits, but it's still relatively small. Um, and we see that as a tremendous upside. I mean, we feel like we've got the best network, the best last mile network on the planet. And, uh, you know, that's just an incredible growth opportunity. It's a heck of a lot easier to eke out, you know, uh, 10, 20 percent growth when your market share is 10 percent, rather than the SMB side where you're in the 50 percent share. 
Yeah, everybody likes that double digit growth until you have a large market share and it gets <laughs> tougher and tougher to do that. It's about maintaining yeah, at that point. Um, as, as you look at fiber and as well as the coax services that you guys offer, one of the things that we, we recognize is we have a lot of different types of suppliers in the CNSG and AppSmart portfolios, sure. uh, some of which you know really attack the market as on-one carriers and they resell Comcast services, uh, whether it be the cable items or the fiber. And of course, they always have their spend. You know, they're the alternative carrier. They're putting that all on one bill, yada, yada. And that's, that's a fantastic model. But I always like to ask our, our underlying carriers, you know, the folks that really are, own the fiber in the ground, own the cable modems, you know, why, why should a customer look at Comcast for those services instead of a reseller? Well, that's a good question. And, and listen, I'm, I'm a, a Comcast corporate citizen first and foremost. And so we've got a, another channel organization that sells through those aggregators and, and they've been doing very well over the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, I, th- I think a lot of it really just comes down to the end user preference. And I mean, you know, I, I, I learned a long time ago that the buyer determines the seller. So if the buyer decides that he or she want a single point of contact, a single throat to choke, consolidated bill, that's great. I mean, we've got a, we've got a solution for them. We've mm-hmm. got a number of aggregators that work with them. Selfishly, I think from the channel standpoint, you know, we prefer to keep that on Comcast paper in a more traditional sale. And in fact, we're, we're building out our own capabilities to do aggregation in, in both the uh, type two fiber as well as the coax plant. So um, I think we'll be able to offer either alternative by the end of the year. We can currently offer off-net aggregated fiber on Comcast paper through our normal channel program. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as I mentioned, the off-net team is actually working to create a solution for us where we can incorporate um, you know, coax into there. I'll also say that right now, um, we do have the ability to offer off-net coax and fiber through our channel program assuming we are putting an SD-WAN overlay on it. So it's a relatively, um, I guess, a specific solution. But if a customer is coming to us for an SD-WAN solution, we can do that aggregation ourselves right now so they don't have to go to an aggregator. Um, and as our SD-WAN you know, solution becomes more and more robust and, and you know, gains, gains the uh, kind of credibility and brand awareness, you know, we're seeing more opportunities in that regard. So I guess what I would say there is, you know, um, Comcast offers it to the customers in both fashions. You know, we prefer to keep it in the channel with CNSG, but, you know, um, there's a handful of customers that are going to go elsewhere. So one of the one of the terms you brought up there was SD-WAN. And I yep. would argue that the majority of partners today, uh, they, they sometimes, they don't think immediately of Comcast for SD-WAN or some of your peers as well. You know, there's that gravitation toward the pure play, born in the cloud provider. Uh, Comcast has made significant investments into their SD-WAN portfolio in the last year. You've branded it with Honestly, I'm, I'm going to give your, your marketing team props here. Active Core is a wicked cool name for an SD-WAN product. One. It's a good one. I like that. Um, so tell us uh, about Active Core as it exists today and also where it's going. Yeah, so so great point. And, and I agree. I think the marketing team uh, did a great job with that name. It's a good one. It's got a lot of, uh, got a lot of runway out there. So um, Active Core... Um, Technically speaking, is not our SD WAN platform though. Active Core is actually our SDN platform, so our software defined networking platform, and that's really a critical distinction there. So we built um, an SDN platform called Active Core that will enable us to develop a lot of different virtualized functions on that SDN platform over time. So we've already announced, for example, that we'll be coming out with some security um, NFDs. Um, from Fortinet and Palo Alto. We've been talking with a number of other network providers for various things, whether it be firewall, security, you name it. So we think we've got um, an absolutely outstanding SDN platform that we can build long-term on. In the short term, though, um, as you noted, we've been delivering an SD-WAN solution. Now, our SD-WAN solution is actually based on Versa Networks um, technology, which if you've been paying attention to things like the Gartner reports and that, 
Um, they've come out on, on the, in, in the top three, literally on the four use cases that Gartner tracks. And that's everything from SMB to international use. So we feel like we've got a really great partnership with Versa and probably the most robust SD-WAN um, technology platform in the business. Now, what we've done um, is a couple of things to really differentiate ourselves from both Versa as well as the other companies that are delivering a Versa-based platform. Um, and I think specifically what I would refer to there is what we refer to as the digital experience. So we've created a portal that instead of, um, I mean, I guess it's it's analogous, Chris, you know, you and I are both old enough to remember Unix versus a Macintosh interface when the Mac, you know, when the Mac first came to market. I have no idea what you're talking um, about. I, yes, I, you I, do. I, I know you do. In fact, you probably know what grepping is or what oh, a grep yeah. is. All right, moving on, moving um, on. <laughs> anyway, we, uh, we're we we're kind of doing the same thing with the active core, um, you know, with the SD-WAN interface. We call it the digital experience. It's basically a very user-friendly way for a customer to manage their SD-WAN environment without getting into the weeds and, and all the complexity that, that Versa typically uh, requires. I think in addition to that, we've made it very easy for a customer to, to buy and, and maintain the environment from a cost standpoint. So unlike many of our competitors, we don't require a termed contract, um, a termed contract for our, our SD-WAN solution. It's literally on a month by month basis. So if somebody tries it, doesn't, doesn't like it, they don't have to buy it, you know? So it, it's very easy for a customer to try it out. And uh, if it's not working for them to, you know, basically to move on to something else. I think the other thing that sets us off from kind of a cost standpoint is that we don't have a usage-based model. You know, our expectation is that customers are going to deploy this and, and, and start adding bandwidth and all kinds of additional workloads, you know, to it. Um, that can add up with some of our competitors who charge based on the bandwidth, the underlying bandwidth. For us, it doesn't matter whether it's 100 meg fiber beneath it or, a you know, 100 gig fiber beneath it. It's a flat price depending on the size of the box that they put in place. And that's all kind of predicated on the, you know, the, the end users usage requirements. So we think that, again, I, I guess the four characteristics I would, I would say really make it work is based on the, you know, the leading SD-WAN platform in the market with Versta, our digital experience makes it the most user-friendly version of Versa on the market. The the, uh, the no contract and the usage based cost model are really critical from an end user standpoint because they know what they're getting into, and then finally um, we also offer that in areas where Comcast does not have a network. So we've actually sold a couple of SD WAN solutions where we are completely off net, and uh, you know so I think those are probably the four things that we really want to emphasize with customers and the uh, and the partners. And to the CNSG family listening to this, one of the things that we sometimes hear is, you know, a Comcast or some of your peers, they're late to the SD-WAN game. They weren't one of the first ones out there. But you see here, uh, hopefully, folks, that this is someone that's learned from experience because they've addressed some of the some of the little hiccups and sometimes the, the little annoyances that people have in the SD-WAN marketplace. One, you built out the network first and you have the core yeah built around the SDN services on Active Core. You've taken Versa, which is a known Gartner Magic Quadrant leading uh, service that for some carriers have sometimes run to a couple of issues with. You've built your own overlay onto it to make it easy to utilize, easy to access, and have a great experience, as you say, a digital experience with that platform. But I, I cannot stress enough, folks, that this is a platform that has that month-to-month -month contract option because for especially for customers that are choosing Comcast, especially as their as their network provider of choice, chances are they're larger organizations. They've got more to lose. They're less likely to take a chance on on, uh, on a new provider. But man, taking a chance on new technology is even more terrifying. So giving them the option to say, "Hey, let's try it out. You're on month-to-month -month with this." And oh yeah, by the way. It's not the usage consumption model that leads to SD WANs that are not properly scaled at launch or potentially are overbilling. So uh, I think it's a it's a very well thought out solution. I encourage all of our CNSG and AppSmart brethren to get active with Active Core and get them get get them in the mix for your SD WAN solution. 
Couldn't agree more. So finishing up our active core discussion, we always like to hear a case study. So tell us a little bit of the story about a recent win with Comcast, uh, specifically on the active core platform. All right. So I've got a couple. Um, one of our re- really uh, recent wins was an insurance company that was about 37 sites. And they were, I think, a fairly traditional one. They made it a, you know, a, a decision to get into the SD-WAN space. They've done a pretty broad overview of the market and, and uh, you know, kind of came down on, on the side of Comcast with a lot of the same reasons that we've already talked about relative to, to our active core platform. The scalability, the extensibility, effectively the future proofing that it brings. Um, and they're a pretty savvy technology group. So they were very aware of Versa, but really like the user experience. But I think a better one, Chris, is actually a smaller one that we just closed um, recently as well. There's a, uh, a business supply company that was uh, perhaps a little bit less tech savvy than the one I just mentioned and had some reservations about Comcast. I mean, candidly, we had some operational issues in terms of our deployments when we first rolled the product out that we've gotten past. Um, however, you know, it takes a while to change a reputation. And so they started out with us with a two-site deployment and ultimately expanded that to 10 sites after they had such a good experience. Again, they rolled out the first two sites, um, found that, that the ease of use, the, the commercial model that we had in place, and our deployment capabilities had improved to the standpoint where it was really a no-brainer. So they went from that two-site test to 10 sites and couldn't be happier with it. So I guess, you know, the takeaway is, as you said before, we've learned our lessons um, you know, we weren't the first mover in the market, but we feel like we've got a really rock solid product right now that's meeting all of the customer um, requirements. And we've made such dramatic improvements on the operational side that we really have been able to kind of point to a couple of cases where there was some trepidation, some uncertainty, and we've just gotten right past that. And that is, that's the story you want to hear. You want to hear that a company learns from their mistakes, moves forward, and comes back with a better solution, uh, yep. which in this industry too often we say, hey, they're doing great, and they've made a poor decision. It took them down, down the wrong road. So again, kudos to Comcast for uh, for recognizing issues and, and really moving forward. And uh, we've been having uh, tremendous success with Comcast, uh, led by our awesome uh, national point of contact, John Lozana. Of course, all the fantastic uh, channel managers and leaders, FJ, we love you out there for uh, taking care of us. But uh, I got to finish with this, you know, with Comcast being so big and having their hands in so many cookie jars, what's that one thing, Carrie, that you wish partners knew that you think they don't? Well... Listen, I guess, you know, Comcast and the other cable companies are typically thought of simply as connectivity providers. And, and I think, you know, all of us can, can point to a number of different solutions. I, I'd like to think Comcast is, is kind of a leader in that regard. But whether it be in the SMB space or more mid-market and enterprise solutions, we really are putting a much, much um, stronger focus on a solution sale. So we've recently kind of revised our entire sales approach in the SMB area to focus on these complete packages that an end user can use Comcast for not only connectivity, but for voice, video, as well as a number of additional services. We've got a product called Security Edge, which which is, uh, as our our, uh, product head used to refer to it, it's a flu shot for your your sales or for your company's locations. We've got a a 4G backup solution called Connection Pro that's doing extremely well in the market. We've got a local Wi-Fi management tool called Wi-Fi Pro that enables the small business to kind of create a segmented front office, back office thing with some analytics tools for the front office piece. So we're doing a lot more from the standpoint of, of bundling and delivering solutions to companies. So way, way beyond just the connectivity and then in the enterprise side, we've been talking about our SDN play, and that's clearly the, you know, kind of our foothold in terms of delivering more robust solutions there. And, and frankly, longer term, um, you know, we'll be looking to leverage these, these additional services like aggregation of off-net circuits and delivering more managed services in the future. So I think what you're going to see from, from Comcast in particular in the very near term is much more of a solutions portfolio approach to the way we're going to market. And that, of course, converges 
see what I did there, uh, converges with our entire philosophy of that complete technology solution. And I do encourage our our partners, uh, check your CNSG back office to find your Comcast channel manager or reach out to Mr. Lozana or myself uh, to get involved with this team. Uh, They are definitely a solution-based organization that is evolving and changing and all for the positive. And a good chunk of that is due to this man right here. So, Carrie, thank you so much for being our guest today. And uh, we wish you the best of luck throughout the rest of the year. Chris, it's been my pleasure. Um, I couldn't tell you, you know, we're, we're so happy with the CNSG and AppSmart relationship and looking for great things in 2020. So thanks, and I'll see you soon. Absolutely. And for those listening at home, we'll see you next week on the Zoom.